happy evening, everybody. Welcome to Garth Road Baptist Church on this beautiful Wednesday. They said on the news something about some sprinkles. I didn't see a whole lot of that today. It's just gorgeous out there. But even more so, it's more gorgeous right here inside the house of God. Amen. I got to get used to this little podium. I don't have to place with my hands. You know, he's worried about it. it's not square or whatever, but I don't know. It looks kind of rectangular. But um, it's a pastor, I just don't get it. But anyway, go ahead and turn in your hymn to, to hymn number 356, and we'll go ahead and let you stay seated. I know how tired we all get on Wednesday evening services. Since I ain't even got no place to sit down, it took my chair away from me. But anyway, once you found 356, just smile at me so I know you got it. Uh, I see a bunch of scowls and growls, but uh, well, there's one smile good. Don't pass the smile. He ain't even got nothing in his hand. He's just happy to be here. Amen? <laughs> I, my memory ain't good enough to remember all these words. But uh, let's, uh, Ruth, go ahead. Uh, 356. We're going to sing, I Must Tell Jesus. <laughs> I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for His own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver, make up my troubles quickly and in. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. And on the fourth, oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus, and he will help me. Over the world, my victory to win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Amen. I'll tell you, six of one and half a dozen of the other, right? He doesn't know all these songs because he came up in a Episcopal church and all they sang was the Hallelujah Chorus. <laughs> the Amens and all that. And so, I mean, anybody that's been in church for two years knows these songs by heart. You know, Baptists only sing five songs and only three verses of those five songs. How hard could it be? You know, come, come on. Uh, so... Anyway, appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, if you would, turn to the prayer list this evening, for which uh, uh, Brother uh, Lee decided I didn't need one. <laughs> you got one for me? And how's it this week's? Okay. I have one, Brother Kurt. Thank you. He doesn't have one. I saw something on Facebook the other day. It was kind of funny. You know, they had a picture of the hieroglyphics, you know, that the people use, the pictures, you know. And it says, uh, uh, you know, then and now. <laughs> Through the language then and now. And it's going back to all of these, uh, they call them emojis. 
you know, and uh, basically the same thing, hieroglyphics, uh, and you have to know what each one of those little uh, symbols means. And uh, so, anyway, uh, I was thinking about going ahead and doing the, in the, the uh, prayer list in emojis so Brother Roy could uh, be able to read it. <laughs> Let's not do that. No, only, only for him. It, yeah, no, it, just for him. He's the one that's having this struggle here. All right, if you continue to pray for my niece, Patty, uh, she is on the transplant list for double transplant. Uh, pray for her that uh, the Lord would provide. Also, Brother Lee, uh, CAC is on the transplant list for a heart. Uh, if you would pray for that one. Also, uh, continue to pray for the Medrano family and for uh, Ms. Queen Cook. That's Miss Brenda's sister. The last time I talked to her, she said she wasn't doing too well. I was, I was looking towards Miss Brenda. That's nothing. She moved somewhere else in the auditorium. Uh, sometimes people do that. Uh, it's a dangerous thing to do because I forget to pray for people who are not in the right place. Uh, you know, Baptists are creatures of habit. All right. Uh, uh, also pray for uh, uh, Brother Bill and Miss Frankie. Uh, if you would, it's been good to see Brother Bill be able to be in church uh, the last couple of times. Uh, continue to pray for JL. Uh, he is, <coughs> excuse me, he is um, uh, doing well. Miss uh, Barbara posted a picture of him on Mother's Day. Uh, she went up and saw him, and uh, uh, she's uh, he, she said he was doing really good. She got his hair and all for uh, Also, uh, uh, be in prayer for Miss Miss Barbara Ferguson. She and three of her friends they used to have a beauty shop together are all on vacation here in Tennessee and uh, just, uh, she asked me pray to have safe, safe travels. Also Miss Charlene uh, is on the downward trek coming back home. Uh, she should be here Sunday to be in prayer. They, were, they woke up in Wyoming uh, this morning with snow uh, at 32 degrees. <laughs> uh, we're gonna, yeah, really, we're going to wake up with that tomorrow as you can see. But <laughs> uh, they're in Colorado Springs now, and they'll be headed, they're headed back this way. Uh, so be in prayer as they travel. Uh, continue to pray for my friend, or my cousin, Bill Rafferty, who has Alzheimer's. Uh, and then, of course, for this uh, Joan, Joan Osar. Uh, missionaries of the Week of Brother Antonio and Angie Ariano. Uh, they just finished a conference up in the mountains. Um, and uh, Brother Ruben, and they did really well had a great time, so uh, I'd be in prayer with, for them if you would. If you'd like to add somebody to the prayer list this evening, you can give you the opportunity to do so. We'll start on this side and we'll go this way. Uh, if you would, please give a first and last name so the curtain will come around with the mic so that those who are watching live stream can uh, hear. Uh, it's easier than me repeating everything. All right, so uh, anyway, uh, anybody on this side over here? this section over here. This is fine. All right, we'd like to hear phrases. Okay, this is my mom. She uh, ended up in the emergency room last week. No news. Anyway, she ended up doing some tests today, and they all came back really, really good. All right. And so nothing's wrong. Just everything's just really good, and she's 83 years old, never been seen. So. It was all good. That's good. Yes, praise the Lord for that. All right, anybody else in this section right here? Okay, this section over here. All right, her last section. All right, go ahead, by over there. Miss Heather. Uh, from a mom, she's at home sick, and I'm having some issues with my job that I need cleared up. Uh, please remember me. Uh, I um, um, I still have financial needs, and um, I have an unspoken request. But I also have a praise. Uh, I got a call about a job this afternoon, and I go in to get those details lined out tomorrow. It's, it's in the Houston area, right? It's in the Houston area, right? I would like everybody to keep praying for my mother, Mary Colburn. 
she's not doing too well. She's got a lot of back injury, pain and stuff. And for my brother, Bill Baguera, he's in the hospital. His sugar's not too good, but I just want to keep him in my prayers. And do pray for Patricia too. All right, uh, Member Lee. Yes, I uh, remember Norma and Lala Wilson. And I also pray for my daughter, Tony. She has diabetes, gastropathy. Which she something to do with the muscles in the stomach and the nerves. And uh, she can't hold anything down. Anybody else? My dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to just stop in the middle of the week, Lord God, and, and just take a breath to get outside the world, and Lord, just to sit down uh, among your people and to feel your Holy Spirit move among us, my Lord God, and feel, us, feel your touch. Um, it's always a blessing to be here, Lord. I'm always tired when I get here. I think everybody is, but it's always uh, uplifting when we get going, just walking through the doors, Lord. Uh, I'm feeling uh, your spirit move. Uh, so, so nice, my Lord, so peaceful. I'm very thankful for that. Uh, and Lord, uh, as we have a, a list of folks here we've already talked about, Lord, I'm going to lift them up one more time to you. But I ask that you not just take care of them in the ways we've talked about, my Lord, but every person on this list has a whole lot more needs than, than what we've discussed. And I ask you please to touch each one and help each one in the way that they need, uh, Lord, and not just the way we think they need, but the way they really do need, my Lord. And please, uh, just just be with them and, and get them through whatever they got going through. And I pray, especially, my Lord God, that you please um, uh, get the glory and praise for it, my Lord. Uh, I'll first lift up to you my, my friends at work, uh, Rolando for salvation, and Steve uh, for healing, my Lord. I lift up to you, Miss Patty. And Brother Lee, please get them a uh, full set of working organs. Uh, Joey Bailey, uh, Tony for healing, the Madrano family, Miss Gwen Cook, Norma and Lala, Bobby Pierce, uh, Brother Bill and Miss Frankie, Miss Patricia, Brother JL, uh, Miss Barbara and Miss Charlene for traveling mercies, my Lord God, Bill Rafferty and Joan Bozart, Miss Deborah, Miss Heather, uh, and Brother Philip, both of those two. Have situations with their job. Brother Philip needs one, and uh, Miss Heather needs you to take care of a situation there with her. Uh, Mary Cover and Bill uh, Bagheera. Uh, and Lord, I know that each person here also has uh, things on their heart that they haven't talked to us about, or that, that they things they've been lifting to you. And I ask you, please take care of those issues as well, those unspoken requests. And Lord, there's probably some things in each one of us also that we need to take to you that we haven't yet. We're trying to do them ourselves. We think we're strong enough, Lord, and we're not. And I pray you please give us the wisdom to give those to you, and I pray you please take care of them. I lift up to you, our nation, my Lord. Uh, our elected representatives, I ask you to please give them the wisdom to uh, make the laws that need to be made and not make the ones that don't. Uh, the, those in our executive branch, please give them the wisdom to uh, enact laws correctly and those in our judicial branch, Lord, to uh, to judge fairly and righteously, my Lord. I do lift up to you the men and women who protect our nation here locally as uh, officers and firefighters and paramedics and also, my Lord, across the world in uh, our military. I ask you to please watch over and protect them. And Lord, amongst them are your children. And I ask that your children, please, uh, give them the heart to reach out to their brothers and sisters in arms, to speak the truth to them, my Lord, and to show the truth to them. Live for you that uh, these, these that are bravest among us, my Lord, will come to know the great power of our Savior. And Lord God, I, I lift up to you our ministries here at the church, uh, the, the Wednesday night services that we're having tonight uh, here and across the street over there with uh, Brother Steve and the children. The, the, the school so thankful for that, my Lord, as it's winding up another year. I uh, ask you to please go ahead and bring in the students need for next year, my Lord. Get that uh, set up so that we can be a blessing to them, my Lord. And I pray that uh, you also touch all the regular ministries we have, like the RU ministry and the Sunday school classes and the uh, Swan Manor ministry and the uh, uh, 
the jail ministry and everything we got going on, my Lord. I ask you to please touch each one. And, uh, Lord, give those who are working in an excitement and a thrill for doing the work you've called them to do. And, Lord, uh, I ask you to please, anyone here who's not working in ministry that you want them to, please point them at that, my Lord. Give their heart uh, a desire for doing that. And I pray that you please uh, give us workers to do these things. We don't have a single ministry here, Lord that can't use somebody else we, we, that we turn away. And I ask, my Lord, that you please bring us workers and get people excited about doing what you'd have them to do. We lift up to you, lift up to you Brother Antonio and Angie uh, Ariano, uh, I'm sorry, Ariano, and I ask you please uh, bless their uh, work that they're doing there in Mexico, Lord God, that you please um, just use them mightily, that uh, your Holy Spirit be upon them and follow them. And everywhere they touch, my Lord, be a glory to you. Lord, as we continue the services, I ask you to please touch each one, fill us each full of the Holy Spirit, and move your word into us. Give us the words we need to hear. And my Lord, I pray that you please be blessed and glorified through us. We ask all these things in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Before Brother Roy comes, just a couple of announcements. Uh, uh, number one, I hate to make this announcement uh, uh, because uh, uh, it will give you ideas, but uh, we had a water break just service started so we have no water on the property and so um, I don't know if they have that in the works to get it fixed or not but uh, anyway so um, the service will be as abbreviated as we possibly can uh, as long as Brother Mark you know, keeps it. You know, my wife used to like to have Brother Mark preach because he always preached short and like him and now he thinks he's bigger than he is and he just preaches longer so uh, anyway, uh, or he's taking lessons from the pastor. I don't know what it is, but anyway, uh, but uh, it'll be abbreviated. Uh, also, tomorrow evening is our high school graduation. We have three um, uh, graduating this, this year. Uh, the valedictorian, of course, is Adrian, and uh, uh, it's excited to see, exciting to see how he's come uh, so far from when we got him back in, uh, in, in the sophomore year. Friday, and uh, so uh, be in prayer for me. That's going to be a hard transition for me. Uh, but anyway, uh, so excited about what he's doing. And uh, of course, uh, we have our awards banquet for our students uh, on Friday morning, and then we are done for the 2016 2017 school year. Okay, Miss Charlene, I mean, Miss Nikki's even going, woo woo, you know. Well, <laughs> All of the staff are, are saying we need a vacation. Uh, so anyway, but be in prayer for us, if you will, especially as Brother Kirk prayed uh, for our uh, enrollment for next year. Uh, we need about 130 students to uh, uh, really make sure that we are doing well uh, because regardless of how many times they sign a form saying they'll pay their bill, uh, there are, we have several that just don't do it. <laughs> so uh, we're working on that, all right? So, of course, uh, as a parent, you know, I, I keep telling them we can do year-round school, and I wouldn't complain none. Keep them all you can. In fact, you can have them Saturdays and Sundays, too, I think. So go ahead and grab the hymnal and look up uh, hymn number 314. That's hymn 314. Once you find it, go ahead and stand up, and we're going to sing more love to thee. Oh, no. 
I seek, give what is best. This all my prayer shall be, more love, O Christ, to thee, more love to thee, more love to thee. And on the fourth, then shall my latest breath whisper thy praise. This be my parting cry, my heart shall raise. This till its prayer shall be more love, O Christ, to thee. In the book of Matthew, chapter 22. Uh, one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him, speak of Jesus, a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And this is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Those are the two. The next verse says that all the law and the prophets hang on those two verses. Everything in the Old Testament, Jesus summed up in two verses. And today, I was reminded of this second commandment. Um, I live in, I rent from my mother-in-law, we live right behind her uh, barber shop. And the only, we have one place close to the house to park where my wife parks, in the covered area. And it's right near her parking lot for her barber shop. And people are always parking behind my wife. And normally this isn't a problem. And I have no grudge against them because they're just there to get their hair cut. They don't really know that much. They don't, they don't understand. But somebody, people just don't pay attention. And they don't think about other people. And I was relating to my mother-in-law today how one time I was actually parked there. And I was going out to get in my car to leave. And someone was pulling in as I'm opening the car door and I'm putting my stuff in and they park right behind me. And I stop and I turn and I look at them. And they get out of their truck and they walk towards me looking at me and then turn and go to the barbershop. And I had to say, excuse me, sir, I'm, I'm trying to leave here. Do you, do you mind? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. I know I'm kind of thin, but I'm also six foot three. The problem is that we don't pay attention to our, how our actions affect others. And it seems to me that sometimes the evil people in the world care more about how their actions affect others because they want to hurt people. And us Christians are too busy worried about ourselves instead of worrying about others because in the first two commandments there's no talk about us. It's God and everybody else. One of the great ways we can help others and we can fulfill the second commandment is by working in the ministry and giving to the ministry so as we receive the offering tonight be thankful that you have something from which to return 10 percent to the lord because the lord loves a cheerful giver ask brother richard priest to lead us in prayer let's pray father we come to you this evening once again just thanking you for this day and the honor and privilege it is to be as you lift Brother Mark up this evening, Lord, just give him the words and touch each and every one of our hearts, Lord. And Lord, that most of all, give us each and every one of us here a greater desire to get out there and spread your love to the lost and dying world and bring them in to know you. And Father, we do also pray for our leaders of our country, Lord, Help them look to you for guidance, Father. And we just ask you now, Lord, to take this offering and use it to the presence of your service. That's all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
you, Miss Ruth. As you know, he did say, we're not cutting a song or anything else. We're just cutting Brother Mark's preaching. Sorry, I know where he lives. He's my neighbor, so. We don't, we don't go that far. But, uh, anyway, 1 Timothy chapter number 4, if you don't mind turning, opening your Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 4. And once you've found it, please stand. I invite you to stand. If you're unable to physically, then... Uh, by all means, uh, stay seated. We don't want you to hurt yourself. First Timothy chapter number four. We're going to go through the. Oh, that was a little different. We're going to go through the entire chapter, and uh, hopefully, uh, we'll get down there. I'll make you a deal. If you listen fast, I'll preach fast. All right. The more you help, the faster it's going to go. All right, brother Roy, you don't count, but. Uh, yeah, uh, he's my whipping post. And so, all right, First Timothy chapter four, verse one. Once you found it, it, says, "Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that the in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doc, doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving." Of them which uh, which believe and know the truth. Praise the Lord that we can eat meat. All right. For every creature God it, uh, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And if er, if thou put the brethren. In remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and uh, exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of uh, the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, till I come give attendance to the reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the pre uh, prophecy with the laying of hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that they... Um, Sorry, my contact is messing up on me. Uh, profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Father, as we come together this evening, Father, I ask that you would help me tonight. Lord, uh, I ask that you would empty me of myself, my sin. Lord, fill me with thine Holy Ghost, Lord, that I may preach. Thus saith the word of the Lord. Lord, I pray that we would put anything aside that is buying for our time, uh, whether it's the job, finances, or uh, any kind of stresses, Lord, that we would put it aside and we would concentrate on what you have for us this evening. Father, and I want to thank you for all those that are here. Lord, I want to make sure to give you the honor and glory. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want to speak to you tonight on the subject of the walk of a servant. Here we have the Apostle Paul all giving Timothy some more uh, command some more instruction and here we have uh, number one the spirit speaks expressly what this means is listen you need to understand the spirit is going to speak is going to speak and it's going to say something and you know when jesus would say verily verily or truly truly or then the psalms it says selah which means listen up it says the spirit is speaking you need to listen up because this is what's going to happen the spirit speaks especially one that they shall depart from the faith uh, who are they is going to depart from the faith? People are going to leave the faith. It says here that they're going to leave the faith, 
shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and a doctrine of devils. When we find out folks leaving the faith, what is the first thing that they do? They leave the church. They no longer show up to church because they have allowed circumstances in their life to dictate what their decisions are going to be made for. They're allowing those circumstances to, uh, to cause them to leave the church, to leave the faith, and they no longer, that you can't find hide nor hair of them because they have made that decision. Not only do they leave the church, they stop praying, they stop reading their Bible, they have totally left the faith. You and I know a lot of folks who have left the faith. They, something has happened and said they decided, you know what, it's not worth it. Listen, I am glad that I made the decision that, you know what, I am nothing, but I am glad that Jesus thought I was worth dying on the cross for. I mean, I heard a preacher say, you know what, we're not worth anything but five cents of sand. A nickel's worth of sand. That may be truth, but that nickel's worth of sand it was so much to Jesus that he decided that he had me in his brain. He wanted to die on the cross for me. Make it personal. Jesus is a personal God, is he not? And so when they, they, they're going to depart from the faith. They're also going to start heeding the devils. Their doctrine. The doctrine of devils. This is talking about demon worship and, all, and whatnot. And this also goes to talking in tongues. Listen, the Bible is very specific. Tongues were for a specific purpose. The one purpose of tongues was for the Jews to give them a sign that Jesus is who he says he is, the gospel. You go back to Acts chapter 2 when the, 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 uh, the disciples started speaking in tongues. What was it for? To hear the gospel in their own language. Not some special language between that person and God that nobody else knows. You ever... I mean, come on, I mean, I've heard instances of instances of people speaking. They say people have spoken in tongues, but when they did it, it felt so demonic. They, they, could feel, they felt a dark uh, aura around them because of what this person was doing. But let me tell you, believe, it, believe me, Satan will use as, as much truth as he can to spread a lie. All he needs is this much. And he knows we're so, emo so much of an emotional being that he will use these things to creep into our lives and drag us away from the faith. What he says, doctrine uh, of, of devils, seducing spirits. Listen, one thing we teach at RU, yes, those of us who are saved, we cannot be, uh, the spirit cannot reside inside of us because when there, is, there, when there is light, there is no darkness, right? Jesus, when Jesus resides inside of us, we cannot be overcome with a demon or a, 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 a evil spirit because of Jesus residing us. But we can be oppressed. We can be oppressed by those demons. But these people, they're, they're going to fall away from the faith. They're going to be... Uh, spirits are going to use... Uh, the demons are going to oppress them and bring them away from the faith and get them to follow their own lusts. This is what's going to happen. And then not only that, is <clears throat> their conscience is seared. What do I mean by this? What does the Word of God mean by this? The Word of God is no, no longer effect in their life. Yeah, the Word of God, they don't care what the Word of God says anymore. I say, well, I used to believe that, but I don't anymore. The Word of God is not and void in their life. You can pray, you can give them Scripture, you can give them Scripture upon Scripture, precept upon precept, principle, and yet they still say, I used to, but not anymore. Their conscience has been seared. And let me tell you, there are televisions on the show that are searing yours and my conscience if we give in and we watch those television shows. Netflix, Hulu, whatever, the what's out there nowadays, Redbox. Listen, Satan has a plan and his plan is to get you away from God. And he will use whatever means necessary to sear your conscience. He knows yours and my weaknesses. And I'll tell you, he will exploit those to the fullest. He will. And if he can get you away from the faith, he's won. He said, listen, the Spirit is telling, in latter days, when are the latter days? 
Now, ever since Jesus came on this earth, it's in the latter days. Even in Matthew, they're t jo they were quoting Joel. In the latter days, Jesus was saying, Listen, we have folks that are leaving the faith. Their conscience are seared. Also, uh, um, the word seared means like they're branding cattle. That's what the, the term seared means. You ever Anybody ever seen that done in person? Ooh, it's an awful smell. That's what the term means, branding. The world wants to brand you. Satan wants to brand you. Not only that, it says forbidding to marry and abstain from meats. You know there are religions that are under, they call themselves under the umbrella of Christianity that do this? You know the previous Pope had them had the Catholics banned from eating meat at a certain time of the week? And now it's okay. Forbidding to marry? Listen, God said when a man will leave his house, leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Praise the Lord, I can cleave to my wife. I need a shoulder to cry on. We men, we think we're big stuff until something happens. Forbidding in the Mary. Catholicism, Mormonism, these, all these other isms in the world. And also it says every creature is of God is good. If we look there, it says, For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused. Praise the Lord, I can eat bacon. Every creature, for uh, for every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused. That's even Brussels sprouts. Nothing's to be refused. And you know what the Bible of God says? It's even sanctified by the Word of God and by what? Prayer. If you think about that, 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 that meat is set apart from the service of because it's my, by prayer and by the word of God, it's sanctified. Brother Priest knows what I'm talking about. No, we had number one, the Spirit speaks. Now look at what the apostle, number two, the apostle Paul, he speaks, verses 6 through 12. And he says here, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. Then he says, but, re, but refuse profane and old wives' tales, wives, I don't say tales, but fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Listen, I don't know about you, but there are a lot of old wives' tale, fables in the church today. Cleanliness is, is next to godliness. There's all kinds of those wives' fables that we talk about. You know, Back in the day, what was it? Taking sulfur and... Come on, Brother Priest, help me. Give them sulfur and this for every day and they'll, everything will be all right. Casserole, all these things. He says, listen, but refuse those profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather to godliness. Listen, if it's not in this book, don't believe it. You want to know what the, what the mind of God says about a particular situation? It's in black and white. Everything for life is in this book. Paul speaks, reminds, remind the brethren. Remind them what? Of what the Spirit has spoken, what the Word of God has said. Refuse those wives' fables. Number three, give attendance. If we see uh, further down, he says, and then I like this. Verse 8, for bodily exercise profiteth little. But you, you know it's still profitable. Might be a little bit, but it's still profitable. But godliness is profitable unto all things. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful and saying and worthy of all acceptation 
For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. He says, this is the Apostle Paul, he says, Timothy, we both labor and we, we're, we both, it says, for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. Why do we suffer so much uh, reproach? Because we believe in the living God. Listen, you really want to learn what suffering is? Announce you're a Christian. Tell your boss, listen, I can't do these things anymore because I'm a Christian. And you'll see, you'll suffer some reproach. Trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. And he says, let no man despise thy youth. But be thou an example of the believers. He says, it doesn't matter. Don't let the people despise your youth. But you be an example. I tell, I try to tell the teenagers, listen, you can be an example to your parents. You can be an example to your grandparents. Don't let them despise your youth just because you're young. Just because someone is young doesn't mean they can't serve God. Just because they're young doesn't mean they can't pray, they can't read, they can't share their faith. He says, as an example of the believers in word. Not only in word, in conversation, the way you live, Timothy. And in charity, in love. In spirit, in faith, in purity. Young people can still be an example in all these areas. Then he says this, he goes, till I come, give attendance to... Look, i got three things here. Give attendance to what? Reading. Well, what are we supposed to read? The National Enquirer? Back in the day, it was a TV guy all the time, right? No, 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 no. He says, give attendance to reading the Word of God. He says, not only give attendance to that, but exhortation. What is exhortation? What I'm doing right now. Exhorting you. Preaching the Word of God. Listen, I, I know you'd much rather be doing something else or maybe even singing, but he says, he doesn't say give attendance to that. He goes, give attendance to reading and give attendance to exhortation. Preaching is important. It should be important to every single one of our lives. Listen, I wish it would be that every Christian couldn't get enough of it. Give attendance to reading, exhortation, and to what? Doctrine. Oh, we can't talk about that. We have enough Christians who are confused about what doctrine is and what doctrine is not. One man said, you know, they were talking about uh, the way Christians love one another. He said, you know, and what happened is a big old story about how somebody did something for another and this big old radio host, I won't mention his name because I don't believe he's a Christian. He was a Mormon. That might have gave him away. He said, it's not a doctrine that causes these people to love one another. No, 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 Mr. Radio Host. That is what caused them to love one another. They understood the doctrine of the Bible. They said, you can't love one another unless you know the Word of God, unless you know God. Give attendance to doctrine. One thing I miss about Bible college is all of us guys talking doctrine all the time. We were not in class where either we were in the cafeteria or not the cafeteria, but the little bookstore where we went and got those books at. We'd sit around them tables. We'd go up to our teachers' uh, offices, the Sanhedrin table, we called it. We would discuss doctrine of the Bible because that's what's going to make you grow. I had a cousin, we both, uh, he, he came back to the Lord before I did. He, he got serious about God and he invited me to church and, and uh, we started hanging out. We got real tight again as we were when we were kids. And we were discussing one. He goes, you know, I wish when, when we came together, we were singles, we had the single Sunday school class. He goes, you know, when we were, every time we get together, all we do is talk about God. I wish we'd talk about something else. Listen, there's nothing more to talk about that's much more important than God. 
in our relationship with Him and with each, with each other. So you're missing the boat. I've got to hurry up. I'm losing daylight. I really don't want to dig in the dark. Give attendance to doctrine. Not only that, he says, not only give attendance to these things, but he says, meditate upon these things. Meditate and give yourself just a little bit. Just give Sunday morning. No, 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 you don't understand. Just give, just give him five minutes. He says, give yourself wholly to these things. You're all in. That's what he says. Give, be all in. Don't be jump in and jump back out. Don't tiptoe in to see if that's what you want. No, jump in to the ministry. Give yourself wholly to wholeheartedly to these things through doctrine, to reading, to exhortation. Listen, when a preacher preaches, he is giving himself wholly to that. Christians, you should give yourself, ourselves, wholly to the ministry of God. Every single one of us is called to a ministry. And one thing I know is when you start fulfilling the calling of what you what God has called you to do, you don't want to do anything else. That's what you think about, that's what you dream about, that's what you speak about. We have too many Christians who are not, not finding out what their calling is and not even getting involved in that calling. And so the churches are suffering today because of it. If I, every single one of us in this room would surrender, find out what God's calling is, surrender to it, you will start to enjoy the ministry and no longer will these seats be empty. No longer will the church be suffering this or that. No longer will it be just four people going out on Saturday mornings. Give yourself holy. The work of a servant. Or the walk of a servant. I can remember what I named it. This is what the Apostle Paul is telling Timothy. Instruction. Listen, we can learn a lot from the conversation or the letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. And just apply it to our life. They say, well, it's the preacher. No, it's the everyone. Every single one of us need to read the Word of God and apply it to our life. It doesn't matter what it is. Give ourselves holy. One thing I've learned, you know, I used to get really nervous about preaching the Word of God. I still get nervous about the context. I don't get nervous about being from people anymore. I don't. Why? Because I don't answer to God. I answer to God. And I'm going to have to give testimony when I'm up before Christ. He will ask me, what, I, what, did I, what did I do? Because what did you do with what I gave you? I gave you the gift, the ability to preach. I put my words in your mouth. What did you do with it? I used to, I, I, that was a real fear of mine. To get in front of people. But I've learned when I get through with the Holy Ghost don't have that fear. Because it's no longer me that's trying to do it. It's the Holy Spirit. I'm nobody. I know it. But there's nothing that I would rather be doing than what I'm doing now. Listen, you want to know if you're out of the will of God, you'll be miserable. Miserable. You will be miserable because you're not doing what God is asking you to do. 
You want to be happy? You want to enjoy your life? Do what you're calling, what God has called you to do. And give yourself wholly to it. Father, as we conclude tonight, Lord, as we have seen here in chapter 4, Lord, that the walk of a servant, how what we're supposed to be doing. Father, I pray that we will take heed, Lord, every single one of us in this building, that we'll take heed to what you have said, and we'll apply these to what your word says to us. Lord, please, please give us the strength and the wisdom that we need to go out upon the, in this world and to serve you wholeheartedly. Or not with just a little bit, not just putting you in a box, but give ourselves holy to you. For I know if we did, we talk about Baptist Church, we give ourselves holy to you. Bay time would be different. Lord, I pray that we can make that decision. Father, I just want to thank you once again for giving me the opportunity to declare your word. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.